Time now for Clark Barrington's weekly appearance here on the Locked On Cougars podcast. We'll get his insight on the Utah State win. What does it mean to play an in-state rivalry game that's as uh, crazy as it was against the Aggies? Also, we'll get his insight on getting ready for the Notre Dame matchup this week in Las Vegas and a whole lot more on today's edition of Locked On Cougars. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. New title sponsor on today, today's show is our friends over at Simply Safe. Today's episode of Locked On Cougars is sponsored by Simply Safe Home Security with fast protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe. 24 7 monitoring agents capture evidence to accurately verify a threat for faster police response. There's no safe. Like Simply Safe, visit simplysafe.com slash locked on college to learn more. Please now to welcome in BYU offensive lineman and team captain Clark Barrington. Clark, uh, thanks as always for taking some time. How are you this evening? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I, I want to first off talk a little bit about the Utah State win, obviously. And obviously, you guys are now four and one. You finished the month of September with a pretty gaudy record. But the rivalry games have a life of their own. There's the famous saying out there that when two rivals get together, you toss out the records and kind of see what, what happens. Give me your overall sense of how things went against the Aggies on Thursday night. Yeah. Um, you know, it was a great game. Um, Utah state came and, and played their best and, and um, you know, we, we, we were able to make enough plays to, to pull out the win. So it was a good game. Now, obviously I, uh, Minus 21 rushing yards in the first half has got to be like it's like it's like a, a, a stab wound to the heart for you guys' offensive linemen, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. what, what was the mood at, at halftime like? What was the messaging from the coaching staff? Um, you know, it was it was kind of a, a weird half of football. Um, you know, we went in there, scored in the first two plays. Yeah. Um, I think we had maybe two, two and out or two, three and outs right after that. And then I don't know if we really touched the I can't remember what happened after that but I, I I remember we maybe had 15 snaps or less probably in in the first half and so you know not that that's an excuse you know but it was kind of a, a weird game um in that aspect that we didn't get to to touch the ball or, or have the ball in in our hands for very long um you know but going into to halftime you know we knew that that needed to change and we knew that we needed to get positive rushing yards in there and so that was kind of the mindset coming back out is that, hey, you know, it didn't go great in the first half, but but let, let's step it up and, and and let's finish this game strong. So, Well, I can give you the exact snap numbers in that first half. Utah State had 52 offensive plays. You guys had 19. And yeah. that, <laughs> that, that disparity is just – you don't see that very often. And you're right. Yeah. You guys score in two plays. You go right down the field, two plays, Gunnar Romney, and then Keanu Hill does the rest getting in the end zone. And you're right. Yeah. After that, it felt like you guys barely touched the football. But you mentioned the fact that you guys said coming out of, out of halftime, you know, we, we got to rectify this and we've got to get back into this game, start running the football a little bit. But Jaron, to his credit, and I want I want to uh, – we talk about Jaron all the time. <laughs> We're on here because he's just so good. But he comes out of halftime. He goes seven of seven, throwing two touchdown passes right out of the gate in the second half. Uh, when it comes to stuff like that, you're minus 21 in the rushing yardage, but he's slinging the ball all over the field. Does that in a way make up for maybe the lack of production in the ground game? Um, I don't know. I, I'd like to think so. <laughs> uh, you know, we're going to do whatever whatever it takes to, to score. And I guess if it's not working one way, then – Hopefully it's working the other and and Jaron was on and the wide receivers were on. And so, you know, we just kept throwing the ball and, and, and scoring. And so, you know, whatever works to get in, into the end zone, um, I'll take it. So, Well, in that first half, uh, Lopini Katoa fumbled a football and I, I was sitting in the press box. I'm like, well, that's, a, that's Utah State's ball because there were like five or six Aggies <laughs> around that football. Then all of a sudden this dude uh, who has a mustache wearing the number 50 <laughs> all of a sudden emerges with the football. First off, 
How in the world did you recover that football? And can you give us some tips and tricks on how to recover a football when you've got a million other guys around you? Yeah, honestly, I don't know how um, I don't know how I recovered that that fumble. To be honest, uh, I was blocking a dude up ahead. I turn around and I see the ball on the ground, and a bunch of dudes diving diving for it. And, and so I was like, "Well, might as well get get in there and get into the action." So I I jumped on the arms and legs and everything else that I saw over over top of the ball, and and just held on to everything until the whistle blew and said, "You know, I'll just." Once the whistle's blown, then I'll fight for it and, and come out with the ball, and, and hopefully they call it ours. So that's that's kind of what happened. <laughs> okay. Obviously, it, those those piles can get rather, let's say, um, dirty, I guess is the, probably the, the, the right way to do it because I've heard some horror stories about what guys will do in the bottom of a pile just to get other guys to release their control of that football. Uh, how crazy was that one? I'm sure you've been in other scrums like that, but how crazy was that? Um. I don't know. It wasn't. It wasn't too bad. Uh, yeah. You know, just trying to pry it away from from some dude's arms and, and hands, and, and that's about it. Nothing. Nothing too dirty. Nothing too crazy. <laughs> well, and, okay. I guess the last thing on that is when you turn around, like you said, you turn around, and you see that ball on the ground. It's got to be almost like second nature in a way to be like, hold on, that's our ball. I got to get that back. Yeah, it's kind of like a fight or fight reaction kind of. Okay. You know, I I know that that's the only way we're going to score. And so just trying to get back on top of the ball and, and keep it on our side. So now, uh, obviously that game, there were two targeting calls. Uh, Gabe Judy Lally actually found out he got his, uh, his overturn. He'll actually be available for Notre Dame. I didn't hear what happened with the one for Utah state, but also uh, Jaron gets hit low in that game. And then later also <laughs> their quarterback gets hit in the leg by Jacob Boren. That yeah. seemed like it really just, uh, I don't know how to say it, like a hard hitting football game, kind of a slobber knocker type game. Was that your assessment as well? Yeah, for sure. There were, there were dudes flying around and, and doing everything it took to, to win the game. And so we knew they would bring it. And so we tried, we tried to bring it as well. So now your offensive coordinator, Aaron Roderick already said this on the record. He said it on coordinators corner. He said the, the, the defensive linemen from Utah state were mimicking the snap count. Uh, can you confirm that? Yeah, they, they were. <laughs> Okay, and obviously that's going to lead you guys to have some false starts. I'm sure that snap infraction that Connor had probably had something to do with that, et cetera. How difficult is that? Um, yeah, it's difficult. You know, like you saw, you know, it caused some some wrinkles in the game. But uh, you know, you just got to try to focus into to the quarterback's cadence and his voice, and and hopefully everything goes smoothly. Now, last thing on the Utah State front here, it's the last game, at least for the foreseeable future. BYU and Utah State don't have any future games scheduled at this time. You guys are going to retain the wagon wheel for the time being. Uh, I know you've played in a number of these games against Utah State. Do you want to see them back on the schedule in the future? Or are you a guy that says, you know what, I'm good. I don't ever want to see them again. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's always fun to play a rivalry game. But, um, you know, either way, there will be good games on the schedule. So. Very cool. All right. I want to talk a little bit about Notre Dame getting ready for Las Vegas. We'll get to all that here in just a minute, but I do need to take a minute and, uh, and talk to you about our friends over at Simply Safe one more time here. The numbers don't lie. In the last decade, over 4 million people have chosen Simply Safe home security to protect their home. You don't have to earn the trust of that many people without doing something right. And at Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. Uh, we know because Simply Safe is used in many of those homes. Like you said 4 million people. They are protecting you with cutting edge security technology powered by 24 7 professionals professional monitoring agents who always hear, have your back. The best part about Simply Safe is they got that 24-7 professional monitoring. They will call you the moment a threat is detected and dispatch police or first responders in an emergency, even if you're not home and can't be reached. They also blanket your home and protection. They got advanced sensors for every room, door, and window. HD security cameras for inside and outside your home. Smarter ways to detect motion that only alert you when a threat is real. So give it a shot, my friends. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com com slash locked on college you can save 20 percent on your simply safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month for free visit simply safe.com slash locked on college to learn more that's once again simply safe.com slash locked on college there is no safe like simply safe 
Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys checking out the show. And here with Clark Barrington, continuing on with his weekly visit here on the Clark Barrington Show. And Clark, uh, you guys last year opened the season at Allegiant Stadium against the University of Arizona. Uh, you guys have played in a number of NFL venues during your career. You make the trip back down there this week to take on Notre Dame. I want to start with just kind of your thoughts on playing in some of these unique venues, the NFL venues you've played in. How cool of an experience is that? Yeah, it's it's a super cool experience. Um, you know, I think um, every time you get to play in one of those stadiums, you know, it's kind of a dream um, that that you've had your whole life. And so, being able to be there and play the game you love, it's it's always a good time. I mentioned you guys played at Allegiant last year. Uh, what are your memories of playing in that venue? And do you feel like it'll be in a way an advantage for you guys having already played there? Um. I guess it's, it could be an advantage, um, but you know that venue is way cool. Um, I remember we went, I think maybe the day before or a couple of days before, and we got to walk through it and tour it and see, you know, just all of the, the crazy things that they included into the stadium, and and it was just, you know, it's just a cool experience to to be able to play play there in front of our fans. So it's it, it's a fun time. Now, I'm going to get my first experience on the inside of Allegiant Stadium. I've been on the outside of it a few different times now, uh, covering different things in Las Vegas, but I've never actually been inside of it. So I'm going to get my first experience with it. You mentioned the fact that they put a lot of technology and different things into this. What do you think was the single coolest thing that they have put into that stadium that you experienced? I think, uh, honestly, like the the sideline lounges okay. or bars or cl- whatever they are, um, you know, there's a sideline lounges and then there's an end zone lounge. Like those, those are pretty sweet. I'm not gonna lie, those are pretty cool. And to have the fans right there next to you and and all, it, it was a cool experience. Well, Clark Barrington, maybe one day you're playing for the Las Vegas Raiders and you can be you can be high fiving <laughs> those fans, I suppose, right? Yeah, maybe. Or, or playing against them, I guess, one way or the other. That's that's yep. all. Yep. Yep. Uh, Okay, and now obviously uh, the big reveal uh, came on Monday with the new blackout uniforms. Now there are guys who are big uniform guys, love uh, look good, feel good, play good. That's what Ben Bywater said on my radio show Monday morning. Uh, shortly after they were revealed, he did his weekly appearance on DJ and PK and said that he literally used those words: look good, feel good, play good. He he's all about it. He said, "I wear the black cleats for a reason. I love black accessories. So the fact that this is a blackout uniform, I'm all in." <laughs> Where does Clark Barrington stand on all of this? Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I I'll play in whatever uniform they give us, but but I I do think new unis are pretty sweet. Uh, they they are pretty dope, and and the video they made to go along with it was was pretty cool too. So I'm excited. Okay, did you uh, – obviously they had uh, – it was Forrest Griffin, I think, is, is the MMA fighter who was part of it, and the, the reveal – uh, when you guys saw that for the first time, was that like you're like, okay, this is this is legit. We're going to Vegas. So like, this is all this is what it's all about. Yeah, it was it was dope. Uh, I don't know our like our Vegas game last year, right? There was no big like uniform reveal or nothing like that, but there was like a hype video for it, and it didn't come anywhere close to to what we got this year. So I think all of us were kind of surprised, you know how how much thought and and work went into to making this video so it was cool for sure obviously notre dame did one as well they tried to do like a parody of the of the hangover to announce there's, yeah. there's not a few uh, at least a few months back might have been even longer than that since there's yeah. uh were you hoping that there was gonna be something from byu to kind of counter what they had done on their end yeah for sure yeah i think we did a good job I, I I would say, I think it was really, really cool. Now, obviously the helmets, uh, that's a new look, kind of that ombre or gradient look going yeah. from real blue to the, to the black. Uh, that, okay. I, the blackout uniform, I think it's a really good look and BYU's had those for a number of years. This is a new version of the blackout uniforms. They, they got rid of the old version, but that yep. helmet, that's a brand new look. Give me your, give me your sense of that, that helmet alone. Oh well, yeah, we were, we were discussing a lot of things. Um, you know, some of the some of the leaders on the team got to have a say in mm-hmm. in what the helmet was going to look like, and so and, and that's the option we came up with. That so I th- I thought it was really cool um, the way that it fades um, from blue to black and just continues down into the uniform. I, I think it's sweet. 
what were some of the other options out there? Can you can you give us a little bit of, a, of a in inside <laughs> look? Honestly, I don't know if I'm supposed to say, <laughs> but like there there was like the another version of of kind of the fading, and I think it was front to back. Oh, okay, got it. So I think maybe, but we we like the top to bottom more. So is it so going to be like that's kinda, royal blue from the front to the back? Is what it, I guess what you're talking about? I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Well, if if it's one of those two options, I think you guys picked the better one, in my opinion. I, I think it's yeah, really, yeah. I think it's sweet. Really clean look. All right. Uh, obviously, Notre Dame, big name opponent. Uh, they got a really big reputation out there. Uh, you're younger than I am, and uh, the thing about Notre Dame is, I was not alive. I I wasn't. No, I was just barely alive the last time they won their last national championship. But it's been forever essentially 40 some odd years almost since they have won a national title they've been nationally relevant uh, many times they've gone to the college football playoff they played in the national championship game against alabama uh for clark barrington where does notre dame stack up on the i must play those guys in my in my byu career yeah um i think it's a super cool opportunity um just like you said they've been nationally ranked high for for a long time and and they're known as one of the football powerhouses, and and so being able to play them and 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 play those type of caliber teams and in in an awesome environment, it'll be a fun time. Who is the best, I guess, quote unquote, blue blood team, or I guess the the one on your, I guess, bucket list? Because you played a number of them in your career. You played at Tennessee. You've played USC both at home and and in the Coliseum down there. You've played at Wisconsin. Uh, man, I'm trying to think of all the different teams that you would have experienced during your time at BYU. Uh, is there a team or teams that you would still like to play in your BYU career, or have you feel like you've gotten a pretty good, uh, I guess, haul of blue bloods that you've had a chance to compete against? Yeah, um, you know, I think just every time you get to to go up against these these big time teams, um, it's it's just a dream come true, kind of. You know, childhood, growing up, you're always watching all these, you're always hearing the the big time names and watching all these teams, and and so being able to play them, it's just it's just cool. Now, obviously, uh, they're a very talented uh, team. Obviously, they haven't had the best start to their season. They're just two and two, but they were ranked number five in the preseason polls. Uh, yeah. Just kind of give me a sense of what you see from them on film. No, oh, yeah, um, you know they're big, they're they're fast, and they're physical, and and you know they're they're really good players out there on the on 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 the film. And so we're we're gonna have to bring our A game, and and we'll see what happens. Now, I want to ask you this question because I saw a little bit of a wrinkle in your guys' run scheme. And if, if if I'm up in the night thinking it's new, let me know. But I saw you and Blake Freeland at different points during the game against Utah State doing a little bit of a pull action uh, with uh, certain run schemes. And also did it on some play action. I remember there's one where you you kind of you came across the line, essentially set up uh, for play action to protect that. Is that a new thing in your guys' offense, or is that just something that's there that maybe I haven't noticed before? I know it's it's been around for a little bit. So now, obviously, Utah State they did a lot of that pull action as well. What makes that so effective in your mind? <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Um, you know, I just think when when you start moving people sideways, um, like we do in our in our zone schemes, um, it's always good to have a change up to throw in and throw in there that's going right down right down their throat. And so, you know, it's kind of just like being able to to hopefully catch people off guard and, and throw change ups um you know when we have the chance so how important is it and we saw this in the second half of that game against Utah State also against Wyoming uh, Miles Davis in the Wyoming game started really getting north south it was like kind of a one like one cut and go like he would find a hole and just kind of drive up field and it worked a great effect for him obviously against Wyoming he started to get it going in the second half before he uh got dinged up and then missed the rest of the game but then Christopher Brooks comes in and he starts doing essentially what Miles did against Wyoming kind of that one cut and go how important is that for the running backs to diagnose what you guys because obviously you as a unit on the offensive line, as you mentioned, you guys are going sideways. You guys go one way or the other, and you're picking up everybody you can pick up along the way. How important is it for the running backs to diagnose what they need, what they see almost immediately, and then just get the cut and go upfield? Yeah, I think it's super important. Um, you know, it, the play kind of just works off of off of them and their reads. And so, you know, if they're able to see it 
clearly and, and quickly, then they're able to make that that cut and, and get some yards for it. And so, you know, that's kind of what we bank on. What keyed the improved run game uh, Thursday against Utah State in your mind in that second half? Um, I think we just made good adjustments um, it, it, all, all throughout, um, you know, staying on blocks longer, like you said, uh, making making those cuts and, and decisive decisiveness in the in the backfield and and those things combined, you know, just helped us to to run the ball better. Very cool. All right, I want to finish up obviously as we typically do with you with some fun questions. Uh, we'll do a little be a little bit Vegas themed, if you will, and we'll we'll find out what Clark likes to do when it comes to going to Sin City. We'll get to that in just a moment. First, though, we need to spend a word uh, talking about our friends over at Built Bar. I've actually got one of these sitting right here, Clark. I know that you are a big fan of these. These are the Cougar Tail Built Bars. Uh, right now, you can go to Built.com, and when you buy the Cougar Tail Built Bar flavor, you actually are supporting BYU football and Clark and his teammates as well. There's a direct Direct uh, amount of money that goes right back into the program and to the players when you buy the Cougar Tail Built Bar. It's an exclusive to BYU football. That's what I love about Built Bar. They've got the exclusive deal uh, with Built Bar. And Clark, uh, can you, uh, I guess, don't need to spend a lot of time on this, but how critical has having Built Bar be a partner of yours, that aim, name, image, and likeness agreement you guys have with them? How important has it been for you individually? Um, You know, it's it's been good. It's uh put a little extra cash in my pocket and and help me pay for things that, that I need to pay for in, in my normal life. And then, you know, they, they taste great. And <laughs> it's always good to, to have a snack there for you. And, and it's helped out, you know, our, our, our team a ton, especially our walk-ons and, and just been able to provide them with, with, you know, paying for their schooling and all that stuff. So it's, it's a great blessing for, for a lot of the guys on the team. Now, one day I'm going to get you to break, help me break in to see that that built bar wall you guys have there at, in the locker room. And I need to see that in person. It's pretty spectacular because it's just chock full of the various built bars. Yeah. Out there. Uh, I need you guys. If you guys want to support BYU football directly, get to built.com right now. Use the promo code locked on 15. Save yourself 15%. Uh, by the way, 15% of all proceeds of that Cougar Tail built bar, the sales of that go right back into the BYU football program and right back into the pocket of athletes like Clark Barrington. So once again, built.com, place your order now. Use that promo code locked on 15. That's L O C K E D O N 1 5. Save yourself 15% and get enjoying the best tasting protein bars out there with our friends. At Built Bar. All right, time to finish up our, this weekly edition of the Clark Barrington Show with uh, Clark himself. And Clark, are you a Vegas guy at heart? Do you like going to Las Vegas? Like, we'll start there. So honestly, I've only been there twice. Um, really? Okay. The last, the last time we played there, and then uh, me and my wife took a trip down there for what two or three days. Okay. And, and hung out there for a little bit. So no, I. I don't know if I'm a huge fan, <laughs> but it was it was fun to go and visit and, and see the sights for sure. It's a unique place. You have to. It, I, yeah. I, I feel like Vegas. There, are, there's a there's a subsect of of the population that Vegas is like their playground. And yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Anybody, if, if if it's your thing, I get it. I've actually there's some guys that I work with here in the media in Utah. They love Vegas. For me, I, I enjoy the golf, like getting down there, and I enjoy the right. food, obviously. I'm not yep. a partier like that, that, that part of it's right. not in my, my repertoire, but if it is for you, Hey, great stuff. But here's my question for you, Clark, when you go to Vegas, you said you've been there twice. So obviously one of them was a business trip because it was a football game. Right. And I, I got to laugh. Caleb Hayes, uh, when he did his media session this week, I don't know if you heard him answer the question about it. He's like, you know what? I don't, th there ain't no gambling. We're just, we're, it's a business trip. There's uh, he was all about, he's like, you know what? Let's just focus on the here and now, but yeah. When you go to Vegas, what's Clark's thing? I, I know you like food, but what do you like to do down there? What did you what would you what did you enjoy the most, I guess, on that two or three day trip with your wife down there? Oh gosh. Um, you know, honestly, we went we went down in July. And oh geez. okay. It it was hot. It was <laughs> hot. And so honestly, besides the food. Um, and some of the sites like the fountain and seeing all the different casinos and all the artwork and whatever else. Um, that, that was really cool. But, uh, besides that, there wasn't a whole lot that, that I loved about it. Uh, we go to the pool. You couldn't even stay out of the pool. It was so hot. So you're in the pool for like two hours straight, uh -huh. trying, trying to stay cool. And then you leave the pool and, and we wait till the sun goes down to try to walk the strip, mm -hmm. but it's still 
99 degrees out yep. with the no sun up. And so, you know, I was trying to figure out, you know, how, how the people do it out there <laughs> during the summer. But, uh, yeah, it, it was, it was an interesting experience for sure. Um, I have been to Las Vegas in July as well in my life. And I, I remember distinctly, I think it was, it was like 10 or 10 30 at night. I remember looking on my phone, just trying to see what the temperature was still 104 degrees outside. Yeah. I'm like, I'm with you. I, I just started questioning every single person that lived there. I'm like, how in the world do you people do this? Yeah, it was it was wild. It blew my mind. I probably won't go to Vegas in July again. <laughs> go, go like go like February and that, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that'll be better. It's like 80 degrees rather than 120 outside. Yes, yeah, exactly. Okay, now Clark, obviously there's a lot of things to do in Vegas. Uh, there, there's the Strip, there's all kinds of shows, that type of stuff. Now, if you were to go to a show in Las Vegas, are you guy who is all about the magic uh, shows? Are you about like there's Donnie Marie, like the the musical acts? Uh, what what is your favorite type of entertainment? I guess. Yeah, actually, actually, I forgot to mention, we did go to a, a magician show, uh, okay. a magic show when we were down there, and it was uh, David Copperfield. Yeah. Okay. And so that that was that was pretty dope. That was cool. So this, we this, did have a good time during that. Yeah. Okay. So would that be like you, you thinking like you'd go for something like that, more of like the entertainment, right? You're not rather than maybe like a musical deal. Yeah, for sure. Going for the entertainment. Very cool. Are you a golfer, by the way? Have we have I ever asked you that question? Yeah, I I do enjoy golf. Okay. So who's the best golfer on the football team? Is it you? Who who's the best? The best golfer on the team. Jaren, Jaren's pretty good, not gonna lie. Of course, the quarterback's I'm, good. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 there's a few guys on the team, but I think Jaren's up there with, with the best of them. So, now, could you compete with him in your opinion? Uh probably not. Okay. I'm just out there for a good time. I, I know I'm not going to shoot well. I'll have good shots. I'll have bad shots. <laughs> but uh, just just out there to have a good time with the boys. So. See, uh, Clark, that is the right mentality to have when it comes to golf. They, they say it's yeah. a, a four-letter word. Well, guess what? If you let it get inside your head, it will absolutely ruin your day. So I think you have yeah. the right mindset when it comes to golf. <laughs> Appreciate it. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so last thing for me, Clark, obviously you guys head to Las Vegas for this game. Uh, when it comes to matchups like this, uh, the, the the Vegas glitz and glam out there, that's that's obviously going to take a lot of the headlines and that type of stuff. But what what is the key, I guess, to kind of narrowing in and understanding, you know what? Yeah, there's a lot of glitz and glam. We're playing in an NFL venue, the, the home of the Las Vegas Raiders, all that stuff. But what helps you cut through all of that other stuff and focus on the task at hand? And that is obviously taking on Notre Dame. Yeah, I think you just, you know, no matter what or or no matter where you play or no matter who you play, um, you know, you just need to remember kind of who you are, your identity. And and our identity is, is BYU football team. And so I think just remembering, you know, kind of where we came from, uh, who we are and, and how we play. And then I think that will help us to, to do well on Saturday. So. Okay, can you define what the BYU identity is for me real quick? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we, we we talk a lot about love and learning, um, mm -hmm. you know, coming together and loving each other and, and learning from mistakes, um, learning from things we do good, um, and then also just, you know, being tough and, and, and trying to be the, the most physical team. Um, every week on the field and so i think those are time a couple of the things that 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 we identify as so awesome well clark thank you so much as always for joining us here on locked on cougars best of luck this week against notre dame looking forward to catching up with you after that game in las vegas and looking ahead to a huge game against arkansas you got a mid-afternoon kick once again out there at yeah. LA stadium awesome thank you all right, that'll do it for this edition of the Clark Barrington Show right here on the Locked On Cougars podcast. Just a reminder, thank you for making us your first listen of the day. want to encourage you guys now to make your second listen, our friends over the Locked On Big 12 podcast. Get it free and available wherever you get your podcasts, just like this one, or also on YouTube. It's a fantastic resource to get you up to speed on everything going on in the Big 12 conference. For Clark, I'm Jake. Have a great rest of your day. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast. See ya.